My question is related to a mindset and heart change when it comes to sexual sins. When I have crossed a boundary sexually, it's hard not to give up afterwards. My mind tells me that I've already failed, so it doesn't matter if I even try to be pure in that area of failure in the future. It feels like there's no going back. I know this is a lie, but it feels like the truth. Even mm, though I believe God mm, forgives mm. me, I've still failed. Can you offer any advice? Bless you, dear anonymous listener. I'm sure everyone listening can relate to what you're going through. And I'm going to quote here an, an Eastern Orthodox theologian named Timothy Patitsis, P-A-T-I-T-S-A-S. I believe I spelled that correctly. <clears throat> Timothy Patitsis says, when we find ourselves in that situation of sexual struggle and then self-condemnation for our failure, he says it's often because we're picking up the sexual struggle by the wrong handle. Mm. And I, I, I think that's insightful. And what is he saying? We're often self-reliant in our attempts to grow in virtue because we haven't really been mentored or witnessed in to the gospel as a gift. What do I mean by that? Witnessed in is a strange expression. But what I mean by that is we haven't had people in our lives who have witnessed to us in such a way that we realize, oh, I don't have the power to grow in virtue of myself. Uh, all I have is weakness. The gospel is the infilling of my weakness with God's strength. That is a very different paradigm than what many of us grow up with, myself included, which was be a good boy, mm -hmm. you know, which translated, get your act together. Mm. Uh, put it more colloquially, and as my spiritual director put it to me years ago, if you're familiar with my teaching, you've heard me say this before. He said to me years ago, and it was one of those game-changing moments, he said, Christopher, you are a recovering perfectionist. You think a saint is someone who has his S-H-I-T together. And then he went on to, to enlighten me. <laughs> he said, Christopher, a saint is not someone who has his S-H-I-T together. A saint is someone who has all his S-H-I-T open, open to the merciful love of the Father. That was a game-changing moment for me in realizing my perfectionism is a kind of self-reliant striving to grow. That creates inevitable failures and then inevitable self-loathing because my self-reliance wasn't reliable. So I beat myself up. The road to perfection is very different than perfectionism. The road to perfection recognizes not that I got to get my act together. It recognizes I'm a mess. I'm a broken human being and I'm loved right here. And that love allows me or, or that love itself transforms me, uh, empowers me to do what I couldn't do. Uh, put it this way. Peter, of himself, had no ability to walk on water. What enabled him to get out of that boat? His eyes were set on Jesus. And even when he sank, Jesus didn't say, what the heck are you doing out here? Get your butt back in that boat, you fool. He said, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And he reached out and pulled him up. So I would say to this person struggling with failure in sexual sin, right? And, and also a tendency to despair. Like, I've mm -hmm. already fallen. There's no hope for me. Right. Uh, I might as well just... And I love that this writer said, I know it's a lie, but it feels true. So number one, plant your flag in the truth. Make an act of your mm -hmm. will, an act of faith that what, what you know to be true at your own admission, and rebuke the lie in the name of Jesus. We have authority through our baptism to rebuke mm -hmm. lies in the name of Jesus. So just say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the lie that tells me I'm a hopeless case. There's a certain truth underneath that lie, which we have to acknowledge, that on my own, in my own strength, I am a, quote, hopeless case. I cannot change myself. I cannot save myself. I cannot 
grow in virtue by myself. Mm -hmm. I can only open my weakness to the Lord. That's the right handle with which to pick up the struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll quote St. Augustine here. The law was given so that grace might be sought. What does that mean? The, God's law, God's plan for our lives mm -hmm. is given to us to help us recognize that we can't live it on our own. It's given to us to get us to the point of crying out in our need for God's grace. But here's the good part. The law was given so that grace might be sought and grace was given so that the law might be fulfilled. Mm. That's the freedom of recognizing I cannot do it on my own, but when I am weak, then I am strong. That's the path to real growth in Christian virtue. It's not a passivity. It's not a waiting for God to come do all the work. There is an active receptivity to the grace that does involve and demand effort on our part. But even that effort that we are exerting is itself the working of grace. It's all grace. I can relate to some of these things, and I, I know that men and women may have some different experiences on this particular topic. So I just want to share a couple of yeah, thoughts please. from the from a woman's and perspective. And we don't know if this was a woman or a man no, who wrote don't. the question. Yeah. Um, that one of the things that can happen if these sexual um, failings are happening in an ongoing relationship with another person is that well, first of all, we may have already heard it said, because I remember hearing this said, there's no going back. You know, once yeah. you've done it, you've yeah. done it. Yeah. That's it. Just give up kind of thing. That that's kind of spoken out there. Right. Um, so we've we've kind of already stored that somewhere in our brains if we've heard that before. Which I'm, is so contrary to what we were just talking that's about. Right. I'm not quoting it as though it's true. Yeah. I, I don't believe it is true. Never have believed that's true. The that's, reclaiming of our virginal right. value we're all called to, or that we were just talking right. about. Right. Um, but also the challenge of in in the relationship itself, if we are regretting something, that means often talking with, from a woman's perspective, talking with the man that we're in the relationship with about those feelings. And that can be an overwhelming prospect. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. can feel like, oh, what if he doesn't regret it? Right. What is his reaction to me going to be? And that can seem like an overwhelming thing as well, that the the planting your flag in the truth can sometimes be in the the truth that you have dignity and value. Yes, yes. Even if you disappoint the person you're right. in the relationship right. with, even if you say something he doesn't want to hear, that the Lord is with you, loving you, even more than that man is able to love you right now. And really, the grace that can come through having those conversations, I'm even telling this to myself, you know, maybe not on this particular topic, but just in general, the grace that comes through a hard conversation is worth the hardness of the conversation. Yeah, we've had many hard conversations <laughs> yes. in these 25 years sure, of married love, sure. and I, I, I can recall certain instances where I, I could almost feel you needing to recognize your dignity does not come from what I think about you mm -hmm. as you're telling me what you needed to tell me. Mm -hmm. And that is an awesome place of freedom for us mm -hmm. when we are seeking from another human being a, 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 the, to be the when we're seeking of another human being to be the foundation of our own sense of self right we're in trouble right. that's something we we must seek from the lord other people can help us mm -hmm. right in affirming our our true sense of self but only the lord has authority to to tell us who we are because he's mm -hmm. the one who authored who we are that's where authority comes from and so if we can together if we can come together and offer open our hearts and our our longing to the lord we may have to do that separately depending on the relationship but to really acknowledge that these sins that we've committed are related to real longings there's a physical component but there's so much more than yes. that that we're longing for and to be able to direct that open that up to the lord as we often say you know to look at what's inside our hearts and 
lift it up to him and ask for him to fulfill us and to console us and to minister to us in those aching places in our hearts. It's yeah. very, it, it is real and it does bring freedom. Our sexual failings are in some ways a map to certain traumas in our life. Mm -hmm. And if we learn how to read that map, the Holy Spirit can do it, good counseling can do it, good mm -hmm. spiritual direction can help us read that map. But almost inevitably, our sexual failings, not almost, inevitably, mm -hmm. our sexual failings tell us a story uh, about our own, our own lives, our own traumas, our own... Um, lies that we've believed about mm -hmm. ourselves or about others. And so I encourage anyone out there in uh, repeat, you might find yourself just repeating sexual sins and you've tried everything under the sun to, to find freedom. I would invite you, have you looked at your sexual failings and even you know the, the, the content of them? What are you attracted to sexually? This is kind of a map to your own heart. And I'm not a counselor, and I, I can't tell you necessarily how to, to read that map, but I know enough from my own interior journey, I know enough from mm -hmm. all the reading I've done and all the, um, you know, interacting with people and their struggles, that our, our sexual desires, our sexual failures, um, if there's a certain type of pornography that attracts you, those things are maps to our soul certain behaviors that might arouse us, bring that to the Lord. Say, Lord, why do I find this arousing? And it might be something so shameful that you are just afraid to put it out into the light. The light is your friend. Put it out into the light. Say, Lord, shine your light on why I'm attracted to this. Shine your light on why this is a, a repeated area of struggle and failure in my life. And say, Lord, is there some trauma in my life, some trauma in my childhood that would shine a light on these painful failures? The Holy Spirit can point you to, to places, to memories, to experiences you may have had. Um, I, I would urge you to find good spiritual direction and good counseling to help you guide, help guide you through that. And we have resources. Well, they're always in the show notes. Uh, of where to go for good counseling. Mm -hmm. So I hope you find those resources helpful. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you want to share it with people who need to hear this message, please do that and consider subscribing to the channel.